today we will discuss again because that's uh, my bread and butter but especially special type of road edges so for example I'm driving a Suzuki Swift Sports Hybrid I will come back to that later but a friend of mine just bought a BMW 130i and that's special why is that? it has a six cylinder in a road edge which is quite special and it's rear wheel drive so this was the BMW creating the 1 series and the first generation 1 series was also rear wheel drive only. Later on the newer iterations also are front wheel drive and now they have a, uh, I think 123Ti which is a front wheel drive uh, hot edge of BMW. But the 130i is still an old school hot edge. And why is that? It has uh, rear wheel drive some of the earliest hot hatches also had that. It has a naturally aspirated engine, so no turbo is there and it's quite big. There were also uh, other six cylinder hot hatches like the Clio uh, V6, one example to mention, but that was a two seater and the 130i is more real hot hatch because still practicality is, is in place. So you have two seats also in the back. Because if you regard um, the Clio V6 as a hot hatch, you might also consider the BMW Z3 M Coupe as a hot hatch. But it's also a two-seater. It has a hatchback configuration to be like a Grand Tour, but it's not really. In my opinion, a hot hatch should be suitable for the family man. So you can also take your children with you next to your uh, wife or your husband, something like that. So that being said, that's a very, very nice hot hatch. And the 130i, naturally aspirated, still had only needed 6.1 seconds to move towards uh, 100 km an hour. So plenty, plenty, uh, plenty fast. Manual transmission was also an option, not only automatic, but it gives you also a very nice, engaging drive. But there are other special hot hatches as well. I mentioned the Suzuki Swift that I'm driving. In my opinion, it's a very special hot hatch because it is true to the core. It's a very practical five-seater. Also seats up to five people. It's extremely light, under 1,000 kilograms. Uh, it's engaging. It still has all types of modern wizardry, like uh, lane keeping assist, also has cruise control limited to the power that you can use on the front wheel traction control ABS all the safety things like airbags etc are all in place it even as a hybrid system so it's better on fuel consumption because it has a battery and an electric engine that helps with it but still under thousand kilograms and what's the second point that makes it very special in my opinion normally voltages get more bulky over time because added safety needs stiffer uh, body. This is also stiffer body than predecessors, but also more protection, etc., etc., which makes cars heavier, especially if you add technology. So added technology there would be your uh, infotainment system, safety systems, as I mentioned, but also uh, electric systems and especially the battery that's put use the power for those electric systems so electric drive add a lot of bulk still this ZC33S this current iteration that I'm driving and I'm the owner of is lighter than the ZC32S while offering more room more tech more room more technology more safety stiffer chassis uh, more power and still being light. So that's also making it very special that they have a new generation that's back to the core with a hard tax, new developed platform and is even lighter while being better in all other uh, categories. And the last thing that makes this very special is that it has a hybrid system, but a system that is there to support. So you don't feel any intrusion of the electric system. It cannot drive on electricity alone. It's just supporting the internal combustion engine. So that makes it a true hot edge. And being now a 1.4 turbo, it has a lot more tuning potential because you can add a 
chip and get not only beneficial uh, experience of the fuel uh, mapping, but also you can map the turbo to produce more air and then you have an optimized fuel air mixture that can give you a lot more performance. So that together gives you an excellent voltage. And it's not only the horsepower that is uh, easy to be gained to the horsepower to power to weight ratio is better because they have more power and less weight, so that's a good thing. But also with tuning you can expand on that a lot more than with a naturally aspirated engine. But especially the torque is tremendous. And why is the torque so tremendous? You have a turbo engine that produces a lot more torque compared to the horsepower as if you would compare it with a naturally aspirated engine. But also you have an electric engine that offers a little bit of horsepower, but especially a lot of torque. So this makes it quite a torque monster. And in my opinion, the whole test that has a lot of torque is very nice to drive, very practical as well, because you could have massive amounts of horsepower, for example, uh, Civic Type R, the naturally aspirated ones, at 200 horsepower. But only if you engage the higher RPMs, which you cannot do on any drive, because otherwise you will ruin the engine, you have to warm it up, etc. While the torque can be in the low RPMs. That's a fantastic uh, base, in my opinion. Also, this car with a stage 1 tune will have more torque than that uh, 3 liter 6 cylinder BMW naturally aspirated. So, that gives you quite, quite a lot of oomph. Especially if you compare it also, this is a car that's weighing a lot less, like 30 35% less. This makes it excellent. Uh, good to drive so even if they will tune that BMW it still not will have it will not have the torque to weight ratio that this little uh, car can have it will excel in horsepower of course because a BMW has 265 ish horsepower which is quite a lot quite a lot um, other things to consider of very special voltages there are voltages that are high perhaps. So for example, Audi RS3 or Mercedes AMG 45, 45 s those voltages are high perhaps. They have four-wheel drive, which makes them uh, have enormous traction. They are turbocharged, so they give you good power, good torque, and still uh, quite capable. And they have a lot of horsepower and torque to begin with. So those cars, are sports cars beaters. So the heyday uh, cars of the same year, sport cars might beat them. Eh? But in all weather conditions, because they have all the traction, oftentimes they will outperform sports cars in day-to-day -day practicality and uh, performance compared to even a true sports car like uh, 911 has a lot more horsepower but doesn't have four-wheel drive always and doesn't have the practicality and you don't need two cars then because you could get close to 911 performance with a car that is uh, also practical for daily use that's a very nice uh, type of special voltage as well so it could be that they have a different drivetrain like the BMW 130i it could be that they have extremely lightweight, which makes them completely different to all the other old hatches. And also the Suzuki Swift Sport, in the lower uh, brackets, even the Fiesta ST is discontinued. So all those sport cars are being discontinued, or they grow up too much, like a Polo GTI. It's more of a yeah, refined type of car, which the well, that should not be. It should be an experience, a real nice engaging drive, instead of being a little bit more moved away from performance and delivering uh, those impressions, but being a fast one to A to B car, which Polo is, is in my opinion. So that's the thing, but also uh, hyper edges, uh, which have grown up uh, performance, grown up uh, traction with four wheel drive and a lot of torque. These cars now come out of the box with more performance than the heyday uh, sports cars like the R34 GTR for example or the, or the Mark
Mark V Supra and will beat those cars to a pulp in daily practice. Of course there are new iterations also of those sport cars which might be uh, you know, on par with home performance or even better in some iteration but you get the picture. So those are in my opinion the special type of hot cars which I wanted to talk to you about. Please let me know if you have others. I will add one special one uh, to this mix. I already mentioned this. If you have a naturally aspirated high RPM screamer type of voltage, for example the Civic Type R, it goes like 9000 RPM, especially AK6 Civic Type R. That's also very, very special voltage because it screams that much. It has so much horsepower per liter which also makes it a very special, engaging uh, drive. There also might be lighter voltages still than the Suzuki Swift Sport Hybrid, as I mentioned. I had an AX Citroën GTI, which is also one to remember. You have to add the rally models of um, Peugeot and Le Pest as well, which were very lightweight and very accessible, because they cut corners also a lot of cost. And it's also a special type of voltage because it's more accessible and more focused on the really driving uh, pleasure. Hope this helps. Founder and